Hi everyone, welcome to Cards on the Table with me, Joe Larkin, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Darrell David, who is the current RDO at Amatrefe. Darrell, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Really well. Good, good. Um, so, first of all, Darrell, if you could tell us a bit more about your current role as an RDO within Amatrefe. So, uh, so I'm Referee Development Officer uh, at the AFA, uh, as, as you've said. Um, so, my, my role is to work on the retention recruitment, uh, training and development and, and supporting the match officials within the AFA um, and and support the the amateur FA leagues who obviously with their referee recruitment and retention and, and some some of them with their development and, and all sorts of stuff like that. So how did you uh, how did you get into working in referee development? So um, as you know, um, I, I was on the Rafa Youth Council for, for four years um, and then sort of after that I then got into a, well, actually towards the end of, of my days on the, the Rafa Youth Council, I uh, I was working at the uh, Amateur FA um, in the Football Services Department, where um, obviously my role touched into refereeing a little bit, but not, not too much. And then at that point, um, there was a, a swap in staff and uh, went for the job and, and got the job. So um started uh i was there i was at the afo for a year at that point and then got got made rdo uh, about a year and a half ago now so um so yeah so a year and a half as rdo uh have you enjoyed it so far yeah it's um it's a very interesting uh job i mean i've worked in um I've worked in le uh, legal center and business centers before this and and did a little bit a little stint at middlesex fa but but yeah it's been really enjoyable um it's been quite testing um because i think people think when you when you are an rdo um everyone just responds to you and everything like that but actually it's one of these where uh, it's quite hard to sometimes engage the people who don't want to be engaged um, so at the beginning, we sort of had to come up with a plan myself and, and my colleagues had to come up with a plan to basically just, uh, see which is priority. Um, and we got to a stage where we started to prioritize, uh, how we were appointing people, then the promotion scheme, then the observers, then the, uh, mentors, um, and then in a way, uh, sort of in the fifth, fifth criteria or the fifth, uh, in the, the precedent, uh, the order of precedent, was um, was the development of everybody because we had to get to a stage where we concentrated on the people who uh, wanted the development, partially because they were the people who were engaging, and it's quite difficult to say we have three hundred referees and only fifty of them want to engage with you. It's quite difficult to then engage them two hundred and fifty without coming up with a full project. So we basically tried to get a few quick wins quite easily. Um, we focused on really recruiting observers better observers and that's that's not to say we had bad observers at the time but I think the education of the observers we concentrate on uh, quite a lot then then we went on to mentors um, and and then the actual promotion scheme how it is and, and we really um, we really focused on that and, and I feel uh, much more comfortable now and the processes that we put in place has sort of halved my work time so now I'm able to focus on all of my workforce and all of the, the referees that we've got registered so so yeah, it's been a it's been a busy year and a half, but we seem to be uh, we seem to be getting there. So a lot of the work was around, would you say, raising standards of the overall workforce? Oh, massively! I think um, uh, a lot of it was trying to engage the officials that were active to give back to the people who were just starting out. So we've got quite a few level fours and senior level fives who. Um, maybe weren't observers at the time or weren't mentors, but now are observers and are mentors and they're able to give people the um, uh, development and help they need. We've just um, made uh, uh, similar to, uh, it's like a hub concept. So we've got, uh, it's split into areas because we're in lockdown or well, because we've had COVID, it's been a bit difficult because we haven't had a single face-to-face -face meeting, but because we've been able to do it over Zoom, people are put into their different areas um, and then uh, they get development within them areas. And when we come back, we'll be hoping that uh, people within them areas, they don't have to travel an hour, an hour and a half or whatever to, to travel to somewhere to be developed. We're hoping that within our hubs, we'll be able to get people within 20 minutes of, of the, the location where they are. So that hopefully will get, give everybody the opportunity to get at least one face-to-face -face development, maybe two in the year and then the rest of them online. 
so so yeah that's, that's really what's what's been happening really so what's the uh, what's the overall goal of that? Is it to try and get those observer marks up, the club marks up in the amateur FA for your referees? Um, do you know what? It's to just get our officials to be better. And I think um, the the thing is, if the observers, if the people who are giving the feedback are educated better, then the officiating is going to be better because they're going to be getting better advice. And it's one of them things where we're not only looking and one of the things that, that people asked me was are you just looking for old observers young observers but the thing is we were looking for everybody you know uh, we, we're looking for male female old young um people of diverse uh, of diverse uh, backgrounds everything everything that we could imagine and it was just that bit of trying to get as many people there so that they get different points of view because there's no point and you you as an active official would know yourself there's no point in having the same type of observer five times within the season and then they all give you the same advice and yeah okay you can work on that advice but actually you kind of need somebody different and if we can have a mixture of active non-active or people who have just come out of the system or people who are in the system then people get different views and people get different advice and and that's that's where you know the our officials we've been really encouraging them to think about their uh, where they can take responsibility for their development and a lot of this is is within their observer reports initially, and then after that, it's it's thinking about uh, their extra extracurricular stuff in in one of a better word, in that they can go and do stuff themselves. But also now we've got the hubs in there, and we've also got um, we've also got uh, a lot of uh, like different projects going on and all that sort of stuff. So, so let me take you back to pre-March 2020, which seems a long seems a long time ago now, albeit. Um, what did the typical week as an RDO look like for you in terms of overall responsibilities? Do you know what? Um, we were just talking, obviously, before this, and I had three phone calls within five minutes. On And, and the thing is, um, I, I don't, being an RDO, I don't, it doesn't, uh, doesn't sleep. We don't sleep, or we do sleep. But being an RDO, the role doesn't sleep. Um, it happens at all times. It happens early in the morning to late at night. There's situations where I've had phone calls at 11 o'clock at night because a referee um, is, I wouldn't say panicking, but it needs a bit of support and a bit of advice. And sometimes they go to their friends and sometimes they go to their colleagues or their mentors, but sometimes they just need a bit more, a bit more support and they come to me. And, and it's, you know, I love being an RDO because I get to, to talk about the thing I love every day. It's, it's great. But um it's it's a role that doesn't sleep and I, I would say within the week you're thinking about referee courses how to engage people thinking about how to keep people happy people are coming to you moaning about what games they they haven't got some people are saying that um that uh you know how can I improve some people are saying I don't think I need to improve there's some people who don't want to do any development there's some people who want to do lots of development so it's it's about catering to so many different needs and you know having you know nearly 300 officials it's it each one of them are different and that's and that's what i'd say it's it's just about trying to we, we actually focus a lot of stuff in different days so a lot of the promotion stuff is done on the monday and tuesday the wednesday is safeguarding and then the thursday and friday is planning for things that are going on um, throughout the week um, throughout the months and throughout the year um with lockdown oh it, it's it's a bit like planning century and to be honest we've been able I, i've been able to do some of the things that i thought of last year but i just didn't have time to do um so i mean the hubs was the biggest thing that we we got off the ground and it's it's increased engagement with officials and the reality is if we can increase engagement they will stay the officials will stay and this is the thing within refereeing we're trying to make sure that the retain we, we retain as many referees as possible but we have to try not to make it as if we're with school teachers teaching people at refereeing all the time because it is a hobby as well um as and some people it's, it's more than a hobby but it is a hobby so we need to try and make it as enjoyable as possible so let me take you to now and the future how how do you anticipate your role as it is now maybe developing going forward do you see it changing much with with within refereeing or not um yes and no i think um the presence of online will, will massively help things because we'll be able to mix it up and do online face to face and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think we, we've done quite a lot of planning within the AFA for, for certain things, but uh, like we've just we've just made a, a, a referee shop for all of our officials. 
again, even something like that, um, now I've been able to, to launch it. But when we go back to, to work, I'm going to need the help of some people um, to manage that. And this is where sometimes uh, referee volunteers other things that help help me to to be able to concentrate on some of the more important things. Um, I think the addition of the new the new referee course that will be coming in um, from the FA will will help us. Because we'll be able to do more courses because it's a, a shorter course. Um, but again, it does centre on the fact that uh, the counties need to be doing more CPD for their referees because you know because of the fact that the course is shorter. They want to be able to teach people how to referee initially initially then we as a county's responsibility for making them better. Um, so again, I, I can anticipate a lot more work coming in, but at the same time, I can also say that, um, that we'll be able to do a lot more because of the online presence. We might not have to go to as many uh, things physically. So fingers crossed. <laughs> so in terms of your referee workforce, uh, in terms of the active officials, do you, do you anticipate there being a lot of problems in terms of retention with with the lockdown that's happened and big periods without people refereeing. Uh, in in all honesty, I think I think the the seasons for all leagues should be null and voided, in my own personal opinion. And I think we should be able to restart with mini tournaments, any cup competitions, and stuff like that. This gives everybody the opportunity to just go back and find their way into it. Uh, it uh, you know, just get back to it slowly so the officials that have been out for a year or whatever or nearly a year they don't have to worry about coming back rusty because actually none of these games matter but if you do keep the league there just for the sake of keeping the league i, I just think it's going to be too much pressure on everybody and the thing is the clubs are all going to say well we want a couple of weeks to do friendlies and then it's like well at what point do we finish do we then rush into next season what i mean we're quite unique um because we've pretty much done 80 percent of our um promotion scheme that our people are near enough done so we we had a real surge in volunteers and, and this season so we were able to get a lot of them done but again that's an area where the FA are gonna people are either going to be happy or unhappy and they're not going to please everybody but it's one of them where I think they need to just get as many people down and sit down and go what's the opinions um, and obviously we as an RDO have a, a chat function with the the FA through teams so hopefully we're uh, we're, we're consulted on that and, and they've done and I will give uh, the FA credit in, in that they've they've uh, they've communicated a lot over the last year uh, particularly in lockdown um, which has been quite helpful for us I mean uh, me I'm on part-time furlough at the moment but there's a lot of RDOs that are on furlough throughout the whole uh, the whole pandemic so it's it's quite difficult to be able to engage your workforce if you're not legally meant to be doing any work um, and that's where your that's where our volunteer workforce comes into place so much, and it's it's uh, hopefully we'll be able to um, hopefully we'll be able to push on when we when we come back to football. But I would say to any official who's who's worried about coming back, um, I think the players and everyone are just I think everybody's focused on just getting back out there, and I, I kind of think once you get into it, it's a bit like when you learn to walk and when you learn to drive, you're, you're never really going to forget all of it. You might have a bit of, you might be a bit rusty, but you kind of have to get back out there to, to be able to enjoy it. So in terms of, that's the, that's the workforce covered. In terms of anyone who might be thinking about looking to get into refereeing, would you say that when we're out of lockdown, it's a good time to try and get into it? Now is probably the best time anyone can, can get into refereeing. Um, it's, there is, um, there is more money, there is more time, there's more priorities to refereeing than there ever has been before. Um, I know in our county, we're very focused on it. And I'm very lucky to have the support of, of a very, well, our CEO is a referee as well. And he might call himself a player, but I don't think he's much of a player. Um, but yeah, so he's a referee as well. So it's quite great to have that. Actually, our finance officer is a referee. Our football development manager was a referee. So pretty much out of the, the employees that we have, we're covered in referees uh, there. But again, the, refer the, the county has become a lot more focused on refereeing than ever before. So we're looking to, to push on um, and grow our numbers in refereeing. And also, you know, we're within the whole of London. So it's, it's, a, it's a unique um, situation to be able to go, OK, we can go anywhere. So, but yeah, so I, I think it's a, a great time to get involved in refereeing. So in terms of 
you've gone from being part of the youth council to working at the AFA to being RDO at the AFA. Where do you where do you see your next step within? If you're going to stay in refereeing or if you're going to take a step out of it, where do you see that going? Oh, um, I'm very happy at the moment. Um, I'm very happy in uh, in in as an RDO at the moment, but. Um, I don't know what the, the future will hold. Um, I went out of uh, football for a bit and and thoroughly enjoyed that aspect of it. But um, I think work being within the youth council when I was out of football sort of kept my football focused. Um, I would I would say that I'm I'm definitely well. I, I have about when I joined, I wanted at least three years to really cement my uh my involvement and say right okay this is what i've done so i've planned for three years covid has sort of got in the way of that but not really because we've been able to progress on things that i didn't think we'd be able to progress on so i mean that's two and a half years at the end so maybe another year and a half and then i'll think about whether i want to whether i'm the right person to continue the the journey for the afa and if not might look elsewhere um but yeah i mean personally for me also i've got to be thinking of uh lots of other things you know and and i think it's if anyone ever has the opportunity to get involved in football it's it's a great thing to be able to work in every day because you know what other job would you love to just go into work and talk about football usually you get told off where, where i used to work we get told off for talking about football too much so now you get to talk about football non-stop so obviously you are a referee yourself as well active official um could you tell us a bit more about maybe your active officiating too yeah, so um, level four, um, I referee on the Spartan and South Mid Midlands. Um, so I've been a level four on that for, for three years. I was on that before for a level, I was a level five for two years on that. Also was on that for, as a level six. So I've pretty much been on the Spartan for, for quite a while now. Um, and I, li I like the Spartan. It's a, it's a good league, very competitive. Um, I think being, a, being an active official, especially at level four, there's so many level fours going for promotion. There's so many fighting for it. Um, and it's one of them things where uh, sometimes, like for, for me, um, last year I felt I had a really, really strong year and, and it replicated with the, the observer marks. Um, the club marks didn't necessarily, uh, they weren't disastrous, but they weren't what uh, clearly what the FA wanted. So uh, it meant that, that I stayed at level four for another year. But um, I, I would say... I've thoroughly enjoyed my refereeing. I mean, this is coming up to nearly 10 years of refereeing for me. Um, and I've thoroughly enjoyed pretty much the majority of it, let's say. Um, but it's, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Love going out every week. Um, I'm just really uh, wanting to push on. I'm quite lucky that I'm able to, to see both ends of it. I'm able to see the actual officiating and then also the development and the work that gets put in um, afterwards. So, but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I'm loving it. I'm, uh, eager to get back, but I've I've enjoyed the break. Um, so uh, much like a lot of people. Yeah, that that resonates with me too. Um, so in terms of this being an RA podcast, could you tell us a bit more about any involvement you've had with the RA in the past and how you think the RA can play its part in referee development? Um, so um, so yeah, so um, obviously being on the Rafa Youth Council, I was um, I was quite involved with a lot of RAs. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go up and down the country and see RAs um, all over the place. I think me and you might have gone to one at some stage. Um, but, um, but yeah, and, and, so, and a lot, the ma majority of them do fantastic work and it's really, really good. Um, from a County FA point of view and from a, an RDO point of view, I'd love to see um, the RAs get a bit more of a handle on things like mentoring and observing. Because actually if, if, uh, if you do have an observer or a mentor who's on the um, on the uh, part of their LRA, then that encourages other officials to be able to go and do that as well. Um, I would also say that it's important that um, uh, that LRA members um, and LRAs continually try to improve their their LRA, uh, their, their local RA because. Uh, times change and if you're not reviewing uh, your organization whether you're voluntary or, or paid or, or anything um, if you're not with, uh, reviewing it each year it, it becomes difficult to then justify uh, sending people because if you haven't reviewed it in a year then you might not have reviewed it in five years and we know in football things have changed I mean if we look back in five uh, five years there was no VAR 
And can we, ima can we imagine a conversation now without listening to VAR? So it's, it's one of them where I, I would say LRAs, they, if they've got a plan and if they're able to work with their RDO to be able to incorporate their RDO into that plan, then actually the RDO is able to help and take and bring people to, you know, it's they pay for their own subscriptions, so the referees, so it's their choice at the end of the day. But if they're going to be getting extra development and it doesn't step on the toes of the county FA who, who you know, responsibilities to develop their officials and, and train their officials to make sure that they um, they progress and they and they are working to the, the highest standard they are, whether they want to go for promotion or whether they're just um, refereeing uh, at the level they 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 enjoy and, and they want to go from there. So yeah, I would say that if the LRAs in certainly in my county, if they um, if they have a plan and they know where they want to work to, uh, I'm very happy to be able to to push uh, to push that plan and, and do what I can to help. Um, I'm very very uh, lucky to have a really really good referee volunteer workforce, um, and it was unfortunate when the art last audio left because. Um, a few of them were older and stuff like that so I kind of had to develop a new team of people who were uh, new and people who were old and be able to go right okay what can we do from there and I'm really lucky that that um, my voluntary team and they work you know uh, hours and hours and hours um, and sometimes we're still on the phone at 10 o'clock at night sorting things out or, or doing something um, I pretty much know most of their partners and, and children they know uh, they know me uh, because we're, we're talking so much so so a lot of effort goes in. So I would say if the LRAs, um, if they want the help, I think they just need to communicate their RDOs as to what help they need and, and what things that they can cover themselves.